making a place, it means you're doing something. And that's what everyone needs to do. Instead of talking about, you know, something, they can, they've got to go do it. So doing it is the action that ends up, and if you're creating a place, it ends up as something that will be sustainable because people will own it and they'll make it their own. It's so interesting, every time you focus on a place, you're always looking at all kinds of dimensions to it, from comfort to activities to a sense of place. Well, activities often are economic activities, or they add value to that particular location that is, goes beyond what anyone thought would be possible because you've turned that place into a more of an asset. Everyone has assets, but most of the assets aren't really functioning at the level that they could be. Uh, a street, uh, a main street, an intersection, so, but they are almost assets. So how do you turn them into something that's more than what they are? And what are the lighter, quicker, cheaper ways of doing it? And there are always ways to do it. Well, if you, say, have a dog run, and you put a little coffee cart next to it, and then you put a little playground, and then you put some nice seating and shade tree, and the dogs are there, you're starting to get a place that a lot of people are gonna come on a regular basis. But if you just have the dog run, you'll get people with dogs. And it won't be anywhere near as good as the larger idea of what that is. A multi-use destination can be a, uh, a bus station, a bus stop. Uh, a school, a library, a, a hospital, a, uh, uh, a street, you know, it can be a combination of things where you put a dozen uses together and it becomes public but then there's so much energy that it draws populations that would never come there if there was just one of those things going on. We need to get away from the street as just a corridor of traffic and realize that it has a responsibility for being part of that place which means that if it's supposed to go slow and people are supposed to see what's going on, then you design, put the design speeds down so that people go through it and have the experience. But driving with no experience is no pleasure whatsoever. So in a town, you want people to literally walk their car through town. And so people are backed up, but they're also looking too. So people are engaged in it and then they want to get out and walk around and you have a real place. A street with 10 places on it is far more interesting than a corridor driving through where there's nothing going on. So it's not hard to, to imagine a good street when you know all the people on a street in the, in the businesses. And I could go down Front Street here in Traverse City and I could show how each one of them could have more impact and more business. And then the street itself would become a more successful than it is. It's a great street, but is it good enough? Not yet. You know, the whole adequate to extraordinary is a big idea because it is adequate and people maybe are complacent, but in reality, they could create excellence that would then take it to another level. I know where the best is, and I know this is good, but adequate isn't great. Excellence, is, it's there, the potential is there. And it's pretty easy with a, a good foundation like this. Your waterfront, you know, your streets, uh, some of the new buildings don't work very well, they don't show, you know, that, you know it's, people need to be more present, the, the architecture is overwhelming. Uh, so there's a lot of things, but th that's no different from anywhere else. But if you start with the idea that you focus on a place, then that, you can turn that to the, your advantage and realize that every building, every uh, bench, every <laughs> tree has an opportunity for helping to create a place. Remember, it's all about people. If a building, you can see the building anytime, but it's the people you look at. You know, when a dog comes into a park, it doesn't look at the people, it looks at for other dogs. And then it goes right for them. You know, you can see their whole body shifting towards that other dog. Well, people are the same way, maybe a little more subtle. Well, I don't like the word open space because it, it is something that's very nice, but I'm really interested in places that people can do things in. So if you take the the word open space and you talk about gathering places that are open, then that that's, means you're doing something in that place. A lot of what we do is visual. We got to have, you know, a greenway uh, that people will walk on, but if there's nothing to do on that greenway, you will get fewer people walking. So if you create a series of places along a greenway where people can stop and, you know, or they can get coffee even, you, then you're, you're making that greenway that much more useful. Design has become 
a fetish among certain people where they think that if that they should get a design award, uh, that they have to be designers to be able to do anything, that the community really doesn't know much and they're not designers so they have no capacity or ability. Well, that's just minimizing the contribution that, that the community can make. The best designers, in my view, are people that listen to how the communities, what they want to do, create those places and then support it with design that is about helping it to be used better and to be spiritual. That design is not around very much and it's not recognized as the kind of design that really is important. If we all of a sudden started defining architecture around its contribution to place, architecture would change fundamentally and it needs to because it's so much about object and icon and it doesn't really uh, deliver the kind of places that people want to be in and they don't go to them. They'll come and admire a building but they won't necessarily do anything around that building. As soon as people begin to realize that they have, they're empowered to, to be in their community, to act uh, responsibly in their community, to cherish their community, to respect it, then things need to change to allow that to happen. So when you take over responsibility for your street, and it's your street to use and play baseball in it or stickball or something and they close the street off, you're owning that street. You're giving it a purpose more than just for cars. And sure, the car can come down and you stop your stickball, but you're at least recognizing that it's the street that belongs to everyone rather than just, oh, that's just for cars. And once you get that, you get that uh, ownership back, it changes everything. They're comfortable. They have to be comfortable. And when they're comfortable, people are affectionate. And affection is a sign of being in a good place. So they all sort of reinforce each other. So if there was one thing that you need to do in any community is make it feel comfortable. Make people feel wanted, feel that they own it, that it's theirs, that it's unusual and unique to their personality, personalities. And then you've got something that's precious and it doesn't cost a lot.